Greetings, barbecue family. Happy Friday. This is Kenyatta Robinson. Thank you for tuning in to the Backyard Smoke Master Barbecue Podcast. Today, I've got an exciting episode for you. We have a special guest. I'm going to bring him in right now. Okay. At least I thought I was bringing him in right now, but I'm not seeing him. There we go. There we go. All right. All right. We've got Paul from from Paul's from Paul's uh, Paul's Grill. I'm sorry. Is it Paul's Grill or Paul's Barbecue? All of a sudden, I'm having the brain lock here. <laughs> no, it's Paul's Grill Backyard Barbecue. That's right. Paul's Grill Backyard Barbecue down in uh south los angeles, los angeles yeah. all right well thank you for for coming on thank you um for absolutely no doubt and then just to kind of set the stage here or kind of make sure we get set up right because i'm think now all of a sudden you know when we first talked i wasn't hearing any feedback but i know i kind of feel like i am but let me let me just see if aaron um if you can let us know are you hearing anything in the background let us know in the chat does it sound okay no okay so i, I guess it sounds okay maybe it's just um what i'm hearing in my in my headphones so i'm not going to worry about it i think we're in good shape yeah, okay. Fine. Okay, cool. Cool. All right. So as we get started, um, what I like to do is also invite everyone who's tuning in, watching us live over YouTube, or you might be tuning in via uh, my Facebook page. We'd love to make this interactive. Uh, the, the engine that really drives this are you guys that are tuning in. So we definitely want to encourage you all to come in with your, your comments, jump into the conversation. Um, we've got correctional officer saying good evening. And uh, to both myself and to our guest, Paul, thank you again for tuning in. We always appreciate your support. Um, all right. So. You were recommended to me. I had Paul from, uh, no, okay, I'm sorry. I had Mike from Bones Barbecue. Oh, yes, yes. He came on about a month ago, and I recall that when we were talking, you know, your name came up. He mentioned you as like a, a mentor, um, someone that has really, you know, helped him get his footing together. Um, so he suggested that I reach out to you and, you know, you, you came on and, and agreed to, to come in. So let me just start off by asking, how do you and how do you and Mike know each other? Like, where did that connection start? I was actually in Compton at uh, this spot called uh, Firewood of My Ranch buying. Uh, I go there almost daily just to, because I, I don't have I live in a small apartment. So I don't have a lot of space. So I go there maybe two, three times a week uh, based on what I need or what events I have pop up, so on and so forth. And that's where I ran into him, man. And and uh, he reached out. He came through. And we've been just chopping it up online ever since. Excellent. Excellent. And it looks like he's uh, he's tuning in. Hey, Mike, good to see you. Thanks for, for tuning in. And again, appreciate you. Uh, suggesting that I that I get connected with Paul. Um, appreciate you, you know, kind of paying it forward. So I, I really do appreciate that. And I understand that between uh, another thing that you both have in common, as I talked to as I talked to to Mike, um, you know, Mike had said that he is also now, you know, like full-time barbecuing. And we, when we connected a little while ago, you mentioned that, that you also, uh, I think you said uh, at the start of this year, uh, you've started to, to barbecue full-time on a regular basis. So um, let's, let's, let me, you know, tell me a little bit about, you know, um, 
what made you make that decision to go full time and like what you know are you doing like pop-ups or is it a restaurant so tell me a little bit more about you know exactly what you're doing with regard to barbecue on a full time so i was working in the construction and pretty much i was i was over it man like i wasn't happy there like i, I was cooking you know pretty much i started off as a hobby and then from there you know, I did one pop up and it just blew up from there. Started cooking daily, for, you know, about five years ago with the support of a lot of family and friends. And um, yeah, I just decided like I had reached a point where I was not allowing myself to grow anymore. So I said, you know, let me see where this goes and see if I can reach my full potential. And then, I mean, it was my original plan, you know, from years ago to, you know, do this and pursue this full time. And, you know, there was a lot of doubt and self-challenging, you know, obstacles where, you know, you just have to put a lot of things aside and, you know, and, you know, just jump for it. That's right. That's right. Um, let me jump right in. We got a question from, from Julia. She says, where do you see yourself in five years? Honestly, I see myself, you know, having my own brick and mortar. You know, I want to keep it small, a little mom and pop shop, you know, you know, go on from there. So yeah. right now I'm working, you know, pretty much pop ups. I'm partnering up with this um, uh, place right here in Long Beach called uh, Ficklewood Cider. And they've been. Um, what's it called? Inviting me out. And it's been official where they uh, have me coming out starting uh, the 20th of this month every Saturday. So it's a start, you know, of more recognition and, uh, you know, growth. Okay. That's, that's awesome. So is this, uh, you said Ficklewood Cider. Is that, is that like a, a restaurant or yeah, what, what type of a... Okay. They, they sell ciders. Just they, you know, they have award-winning ciders and stuff like that. You know, I was recently introduced to them myself. Oh, okay. That sounds wow. That sounds pretty good. That sounds awesome. Um, now tell me what. Uh, so, another thing I remember from talking to Mike, and also just from from looking at your uh, at your. Uh, Instagram page and actually let me let me pull that up here all right yeah on your your Instagram page um, you describe yourself as being the uh, a freestyle cooking at its finest and I think that's what I remember Mike describing that you know with something that you're really good at is, uh, you know, just coming up with your own creations and, and things yeah. like that. So how would you describe your barbecue style? You know what? Of a variety of styles put into one. You know, it's like, you know, back in the day where, you know, you were left home alone, you know, and during the summertime and you got to do what you got to do in the fridge, you know? And going on from there... You know, you, you you make with what you got. And sometimes the simplicity of of what it is, it's just, it's, it's, it makes it happen. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm, like I'm looking at, you know, just some of these samples that you got right here in this reel. I'm seeing like a good variety, some combination of things. You know, I'm seeing some seafood and some, some ribs and... Oh yeah, I like to uh, I like to uh, challenge of how far we can go in smoking things. I think I've done uh, smoked pasta once. Okay, and Mike says uh, this dude was literally cooking like an hour ago. Yeah, uh, yeah, um, he probably so excited to be with you, uh, but I know he's already thinking about tomorrow. He grinds. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. that's that's true. When when we first connected about twenty minutes ago, uh, you said that you were you were still still working, uh, but yeah. you you shut it down, you know, so that you could talk to me. So I do appreciate that for sure. What what do you have going tomorrow? Uh, I actually have a brisket in the smoker right now. 
Oh man. Okay. Now, now you got to tell me more. Tell me more about that. So, is it is it just? Uh, are you doing just one brisket? Do you have multiple briskets going? Now, what I usually tend to do is do combination plates. So you get a, a, variety, a little bit of everything on a to go. You get me? So I usually do you know three to four meats with your sides topped with either corn, pickles, and your bread. You know, so you're getting a full course meal, meal, you know. So, you know, tomorrow I'm having chicken quarters. I have um, rib tips, brisket. What else? Uh, and I bought a, um, pork chops. Okay. I got the pork chops, yeah. And uh, are you, do you have all of this going on a, on a stick burner? Uh, I actually have it in my smoker, my tube, yeah. Okay. Okay. Nice. Nice. Um, all right. Rodney wants to know what is your location? Cause he lives in Southern California too. Um, on Monday through Friday, you could find me on Figueroa and 82nd street. All right. So and starting, starting yeah. next week on Saturday, every Saturday, I'll be located at Ficklewood cider and long beach. Okay. Okay, excellent. So, so uh, you said Fig and and eighty second. So, second, yeah. All right. Let me pull something else up up here. What what's your, yeah? What what's your favorite thing to make? Honestly, my favorite thing to make is uh, pulled pork, pulled pork and tri tip. All right. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just kind of I'm kind of wild because I'm just seeing such a nice variety oh, yeah. you know, of things on your. It's everywhere, man. Like it's it's uh, barbecue. I mean, it's unstable. Like you're making. I'm making tortas, burritos, nachos, sliders, quesadillas. You name it. Yeah, now, okay, now, wait a minute. Now, I could have swore in one of, one of these, yeah, like, I'm seeing, like, like, a combination of some mac and cheese, like, that right there. What, what do we got going on right here? You pretty much put a plate in between two buns, so it, it has, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It has hot links, it has mac and cheese, pulled pork, shredded cheese, uh, baked beans, pickles, sauce. I mean, it's pretty much a meal in, inside of bread. Okay, okay. So it's a giant. It's, a, it's pretty much a giant torta, barbecue style. Yeah. Now, see, you guys are, are an inspiration with your your cre creativity because I'm still, you know, kind of like trying to master, you know, maybe one one particular meat or just trying to do kind of like the traditional fare. But I, you know, I get inspired when I see see how you guys are just putting together a lot of favorites you know yeah, and, like and those, getting those it are together my famous tacos for taco tuesday everybody loves those that looks that looks awesome it, it's different you know yeah I, I like to do um uh, um like a latin fusion you know i do a lot of uh i, I try to bring on the heat with flavor you know a lot of chipotle habanero the chile de arbol, you know, chili flakes for the mild. There you go. Now, all 100s, he wants to know, at what age did you find out you had a passion for making food? Oh, man, I've been doing this since I can remember. I was always the one wanting to barbecue at, you know, everybody's uh, little get-together parties and, you know. So where did you, how did you start? Like, did um, you... Pretty much just watching my mom. My mom yeah. used to cook, and, uh, you know, one day it's just, you know, we just mocked her, and we went on from there. Okay. And then was there anything, like a particular grill or smoker that you started on, or were you just... I just... started on a traditional Weber. Okay. Like a Weber kettle? Yeah, Weber kettle, yeah. Okay. That's That's great. All right, correctional officer asks, 
Paul, he see, well, he's saying, hit the college campus, find your nearby base. Students living on campus always are are hungry, especially late at night. Oh, yeah, I'm trying right now. I'm trying to, in the process of getting my paperwork together so I can go on the two main cities that, uh, you know, I go to. You know, right now, uh, Los Angeles and Long Beach are the two main cities I'm I'm located at. So, I, you know, every every city has its own rules. Yeah. So once I get all that together, then let's go. I'll go. Okay. That sounds good. Um, Rodney says, where is your next event? The next uh, most recent event is going to be uh, at Ficklewood Cider on the 20th of this month. After that, I'll be back at Ficklewood on the 2nd of May. And then I have a pop-up uh, May 5th in Linwood. So I, I keep everything up to date on the on Instagram. Okay. And all right, now this looks like this looks like some brisket right here. Yeah, that's that's some brisket. Yeah. So are you cooking I know you said you got it on the smoker already, so I assume you're going low and slow. Low and slow. Is it a like how big is it? It's a fifteen pounder. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, right now that's that's one of my one of the meats that gave me the most uh battles, you know, me me and the yeah. me and the brisket, you know. It, it took me a little while, you know, but practice, practice, practice until you get it right. Absolutely, absolutely. Um all right, here's my daughter uh, chiming in that slow San Luis Obispo has great uh tri-tip by the way and I, I do think uh she's in the central coast and I think that that they are known for the the tri-tip there but um yeah getting back to like your comment about brisket being the big challenge like I would I would agree um I think everyone who really when you really get serious about barbecue that that's the the meat that you want to try and and conquer oh, yeah, is yeah, yeah. is brisket um but I'm looking here man I'm looking at, I see a, a pretty impressive smoke ring going on here so you keeping it with like you said low and slow or you low you, and slow Aiming at like two twenty five, two fifty. In between, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't drop no right. more higher than that. Yeah, I try to keep it, you know, balanced and even right there. Nice, nice. Yeah, between I try to do fourteen to sixteen hours. Okay, Esmeralda. Okay, that that comment just went by me. I was about to say, yeah, she said Paul's food is the shiznit. It's the best. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got some fans out there. Oh yeah, man. I mean, I'm I'm always working, like Mike says, man. I'm I'm not, I'm nonstop up until the weekends when I get my daughters. But even then, sometimes you know I'm I'm barely starting up right now. So you got to take what's thrown at you sometimes. And right. You no, know, thank God my grandma watches my girls. You know, once in a while, and and they're more than happy to come with me too. I mean, they love working with me alongside. They you know they're very they like it. Oh, that's great. That's great. How old are your girls? Seven and eight. Okay. That, that's awesome. That's awesome that they enjoy being out there with Pops. Um, now, Mike says, do you plan on getting a larger offset? I, I'm going to have to. That's one thing that uh, I ran into real quick is that I didn't expect for my food to blow up as quick as it did. So I pretty much what I have, it's, it's like training ground, you know, like that's a starter kit. And I, I'm only doing, I've been doing this five years now, you know, as a hobby and everything in about four, four months full time. And I grew, I outgrew this, my, my setup about like three and a half years ago, but you gotta make, you gotta do what you, with what you have, you know? Absolutely. It's, 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 they're expensive. Yeah, good offset. Yeah, that's good. That's an investment. But when you love it, you know, it, it's definitely well worth it. And it sounds oh, like yeah. it's, it's paying off for you big time. Oh, yeah. That's one thing I tell everybody, man. If you're going to invest in something, it's best to do it on yourself. No doubt. All right. So Kevin says, Paul, can you describe the adversities one may face when starting their own cooking business? That's a great question. 
you have your slow days and your you have your good days and your bad days. Uh, you just gotta count your blessings, man. I mean, I've been put through some obstacles where and challenges where it's, you know it's all mental. Where it's like you know you start to question yourself: Am I really ready for this? Am I, you know, am I gonna make it? You know, do I need to apply for another job? You know, do I go back to doing this? You know, half time. You know, it's part time. And, and you know, you just patience is key to success. Yeah. And you know, luckily I have a lot of support, a lot of friends, a lot of family that you know, hey, when they see me when it's you know tough times, it's a hey, Hey, count your blessings, count your blessings, and just be patient. And, hey, that's, that's it, you know? Hey, Any regrets? Any, Any regrets? regrets? Not at all. Great. Not at all. The only regret is that I wish I would have done this sooner. Done it sooner. Yes. Yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm watching you guys. I'm watching you and Mike, you know, and oh, uh, Mike, Mike, Joe. Mike booming. I'd be seeing Mike, too, man. Uh Dude, like, it's, you know, what he said about me and for him to, like, I, I admire his passion, too, man. Like, when he gets, when he's on, when he's going, like, he's on it, man. Like, the meat, yeah. the presentation, you know, everything's on point. Like, that dude's going to make it. Like, that, 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 he's hitting key points right now. Well, I think, I think all you guys are going to make it because you got the passion, you okay, know. That's what I you think. Mean, heart. That's right. You gotta have the the heart, and you know, doing what you love. It doesn't it doesn't feel like work, you know. Not at all. Not at all. All right. And then speaking of Mike, he asks, "What is the biggest challenge of being a street vendor?" Um. Honestly, it's just overcoming fear, man. Like, you know. When you start off, obviously, you can't afford your permits. You know, you're blessed if you can, you know, but not all of us can. So you're, you, you know, just you start thinking about the the what if. But, I mean, if you stay in that mindset, like, you, you really ain't going to go anywhere. You're going to hesitate. Once you hesitate, you make mistakes. And, you know, it's just it's either you're all in or you're all in. But, um uh, other than that, man, like you just go with the flow. I mean, anything, anything could happen in the street, you know, as well, especially where I'm at. Yeah. Yeah. But other than that, man, it's been, it's, I've, I've been blessed, man. There's, there hasn't been nothing other than the other day I got hit with my first fake $20 bill. Oh. <laughs> oh. See that, man, that, that is, that, that pisses me off, man, because, you know, you see the guy, the, the the guy out there that that's cooking. You know he's doing it from the heart, man. He's he's coming up, <clears throat> like you said, you know, coming up slow, <clears throat> and you know you're putting your heart and soul, you know, into into that food that you're preparing, man. And somebody hits you with a, a fake one, man. That that sucks, but that's all right. I think karma karma will come back, and and uh, you'll 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 I'll be all right. Back. I believe in that, but I mean, hey, lesson learned, you know, you gotta, you know, I, I, I'm a one guy, I'm only one guy, and I do everything, down from the sides to the setup, the dishwasher, the oh. host, the, you know, I'm charging you and everything, and it was one of those days that I got slammed, and, you know, it was my fault for, you know, kind of being distracted and not really collecting it, you know, looking at it, yeah. as I usually do, so, I mean, lesson learned, like, no matter how long the line, like, they're either gonna wait for it, or you know, I can't have that happen again. Yeah, that that's hard. That's hard. But you know, especially when you're like you said, you're a one man show and you're you're doing it all. All right. Um all right, correctional officer says, Do you have your recipes written and saved? Are they passed down from family? They're actually all they're actually all me, man. Like um just like the what well, you guys were talking with Mike, you know, I, I, at first when I first started, I was so stoked. I wanted to try every seasoning, and um, trust me, I was doing good where I was able to in the beginning, but it gets so expensive, and you know they're trying to charge you ten to you know sixteen dollars for a little eight twelve ounces of you know seasoning. Preach. So that's that's why that's why when Mike did his uh, seasoning, I was like, bro, like I need to try that. Yeah. You know, you know like. Other than that, 
you know, I just picked and I stayed with what I knew, what I what I liked, the flavor, the color. And uh, I started just doing my own mix. And I just stuck with that. You know, it's 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 more affordable. And it just, you know, it's my, my signature flavor and color. There you go. And that's, yeah, that, that's what I recommend to, to folks as well. I know when you start off, you know, you want to try, you know, all these exciting looking rubs and things like that. And I think that that's okay when you start off. But then once you start to get a feel for, you know, what you like, you know, the flavor combinations that you like, I mean, you can definitely, you know, experiment, create your own, your own rub, get your own signature style and, and stick with it and just refine it. And, and like, and like Paul says, you know, those rubs can start to get really expensive if you try to get, get too many of them. Yeah, they rack up. Yeah, so I just, you know, I, I stuck with the ones I, I, I really liked. But other than that, I mean, there's no real recipe I put on. It's like, to be honest with you, my biggest, mis my mistakes have been my biggest success. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's in other words, don't be afraid to experiment, guys. No, don't. You're gonna mess up and burn you're gonna mess up, burnt meat, you're gonna dry it out, you know, yeah. you're, you're gonna learn. That's right. Just this last last weekend I, I tried oxtails for the first time and okay. yeah, they came out too chewy, too tough. I mean I figure okay, I, I just I didn't have them on the smoker long enough, you know, probably need to give them another extra two hours, you know, is what I'm thinking. But yes, you learn from your uh learn from your mistakes and keep striving. Now Esmeralda says, Paul, can you cater at a house party or event? Always. I'm always open for that catering. You know, uh, I'm known for my big servings, you know, uh, my, you know, I offer a variety of everything and I, I, I pretty much allow everybody to make their own combos. So we cater, we do house parties, you name it. All right. And just to uh, remind folks. And I kind of don't don't have this showing there. Thank you, Aaron, for cleaning that up for me. So you can reach Paul, reach out to him. He, you can get him on Instagram, and it's simple, pauls.grill. So at pauls.grill, hit him up, get in his DMs, let him know that you'd like to, uh, like to hire him for your event. And Rodney says, congratulations, Paul on following your passion absolutely let's get it all right what do we got next aaron all right she's a little bit slow on these comments i'm gonna have to start <laughs> calling you out <laughs> all right correctional officer says everyone has style what is the difference between west coast grilling here in the midwest rib tips are one of our well-known specialties Okay, so do you think there's like a, a West Coast grilling style or profile? What's your opinion on that? Uh, there could be, possibly. I mean, everybody kind of represents where they come from. So you got New Orleans, you know, you got Louisiana. And I said, what better way? I mean, I, I was born and raised in South L.A., so why not, you know, Just call it the South L.A. style, West Coast style, whatever you want to call it, you know? So it's pretty much... It's all interconnected in a way. You know, we all have our similarities with our own little twist in it, but it all comes from, you know, the same place. You know, yeah. it's just our little twist of where we're coming from, representing our background, you know? Yeah, I would agree with that. And, you know, the Bay, I mean, the, the California is so uh, regionally different. You know, like we were talking, like I mentioned, um, you know, tri tip and, you know, being popular the santa maria style especially like central coast but mm -hmm. then you know you, you go further south like in the la area where you are you know and we're seeing at least i'm seeing a lot of like fusion you know combining barbecue with mexican influences mm -hmm. just whatever is your background um you know, maybe up in the bay area you might get maybe a little bit more you know barbecue uh combined in with soul food you know kind of it can vary but yeah everyone definitely has their own 
bringing their own flavor, their own, you know, style to it. You know, that's yeah. what makes makes barbecue outstanding for sure. Yeah, so that's what I like to do. I like to do all that and put it and bring it into one place, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. We're trying to keep up with these comments. All right. Melissa says, have you ever had problems with the police? I've seen videos where street vendors are getting harassed. Um, I only hmm. had one, op uh, one, one occasion where um, I was in Compton. You know, I did a pop up with Compton on a Sunday. I had my daughters, everything. And, you know, just like you see everyone here in the comments. I mean, everyone comes out and supports, man. That's one thing I've been blessed with, a lot of love from family and friends. And, you know, people, you know, your your your, your clientele end, ends up being your friends. And they, you know, the, the food speaks for itself. And they come back and they come back. And so, long story short, the, we got shut down. Mm. We got shut down, <laughs> told us to go home. Now, is that because you didn't, did you have a, I mean, like, what was the reason? Because you didn't have was, a permit uh, it or? Was, it was a Sunday fun day where they do all the shows with the lowriders on okay. Sunday. And I guess there was a, recently at that time, there were a lot of LA takeovers getting a little out of control. And I guess, you know, they mistook us with that or, you know, whatever they had to do. And like I told the sheriff, man, I was like, you're doing your job. I'm doing mine. Go ahead and do what you got to do. And, you know, we'll go on from there. There's no need to take this any further or whatever. Let's just get it over with and go about our day. And that's what happened. Okay. But, uh, other than that, man, it wasn't, it wasn't a bad experience. It was another learning experience on how to, you know, right. keep everybody calm, collective, and not aggravate anybody and just get on with the situation. I hear you. I hear you. All right. Rodney says, describe your style of barbecue. Is it Texas or Kansas City or your own? Uh, it's definitely Texas, Texas inspired. But I like, you know, the fusion of everybody else. Like, you know, the way they, they, they smoke it, you know, from full pieces, full chunks, you know. A uh, whole, you know, whole cows, whole pigs, like every, it's, it's crazy. So, like, you know, I like to just nitpick, nitpick from here and there, and you know, just see what comes out of it. The whole point of, you know, freestyle cooking is where you know you kind of have to break the rules to kind of create something right. to catch, a, you know, attention. You know, everybody's used to the salt and pepper, you know, and everything, but you know, like, I just feel like, what if we had a little flavor, a little sweet, a little sour, you know, a little spice. You know, let's change it up, uh, uh, get away from the sweet, you know? Absolutely. Now, what's uh, what's on your, like, your 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 barbecue wish list? Like, is there something, you know, that, that you want to smoke that you haven't done yet? Um, I've been wanting to do, they call it a lechon or a whole pig. But, uh, you know, the way I had customized my, my setup, you know, I have a double-sided Santa Maria. And then I have uh, my my offset smoker, and there's no room. I don't have no room. Okay. So I mean, eventually I want to upgrade, you know, to a new to you know a new setup, and hopefully have enough space to do that. Yeah. But I've been wanting to do that. Yeah, that that's on my bucket list too. Um, now there's you can always do a suckling pig. Have you done that just to kind of get your feet wet? Uh, actually, I like to play it around with uh, pork belly. Pork belly is a yes. good practice, yes. you know, because you can also do it like pork belly burnt ends where it's like yep. very soft and it'll break on touch, but then you can have the crispy top. It depends on how you cook it, temperature, how you prep it. It's a, it's a good little practice run for, for that. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, the pork belly. That, I think that's my wife's. Uh, the most frequently requested thing that I do is the pork belly burnt ends. A correctional officer says, make sure you invite Paul for your 4th of July cyber cook-off. All right. I will definitely make sure to do that. Yep. A correctional officer uh, last week uh, talked me into committing to doing like a virtual 4th of July 
uh, cook, cook off like event. So we're going to definitely be putting that, that together. So hopefully you'll okay. be available to, to pop in and, you know, cool. yeah, yeah, we're going to have a good time. That's right. All right. Next up, Aaron. All right. Paul supports small businesses. Oh yeah. Always, man. Uh, you got to show love to everybody, you know, like, Everybody, even though I'm selling food from the people that pass by, I'm buying, I'm buying tamales, raspados, you know, corn, you know, down to the old man that I see him on a daily basis, man. You know, how he's, I want to say, mid sixties, early seventies, hauling around this little cart, you know, yeah. selling soda chips to the nearby schools, man, and. You know, we like I said, we all have our slow days and good days. And if I can help out in any hand, you know, and and I, I love that, man. It's all for the people. You know, we're all headed to the same direction, man. If we could all just help each other out and just stay humble. That, right. That's just the key. Like, you know, like I tell everybody, you can cook the same thing I'm cooking and post up next to me. And I have no issue with that. You get me? Like, everybody has their own luck. You know, it's 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 what you put in that's what you're going to receive in the end, you know, like, and it doesn't come tomorrow, you know, it's just, again, patience. That's and right. You just got to show love, love and support, man. You got to love everybody, support everybody. And, you know, it comes out in the food that you cook, you know, you, you cook with love and you have that, you know, that mentality about it. I think it, it comes out in the food. Um, oh, yeah. So definitely that, having that's, that. That's one, that's one thing my mom told me, man. Um, she, she's like, if you don't feel it, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. That's right. Trust me, it's going to be a bad batch. That's that's right. Yep. Yeah. Don't be out there mad or with an attitude. Oh, no, you're going to taste <laughs> it. That's, that's going to be no bueno. Absolutely. Absolutely. Paul, you are with an awesome, with an awesome platform. Keep up the good work. Thank you, man. Thank you. All right. Mike says the comments and the people who tend into this podcast speaks volumes on Paul's behalf. Absolutely. Cause we're, we're having a hard time keeping up with the comments, man. So much support. If it yeah, wasn't for a lot of these people, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now, man. Like a lot of these are my day ones. They see me through the struggle, to the success, to everything. Yep. We're feeling, we're seeing it. We're seeing yep. it and feeling the love, man. That's yeah, awesome. We still, got, we still got a long ways to go. Yes, sir. All right. Rodrigo says, Paul, you sound like, like a great father. Oh, yeah. I love my girls. Everybody knows I love my girls. It's the reason why I work hard. I don't, I, I don't give myself hours Monday through Friday in order to, you know, give what I can uh, when I get them on the weekends. Yeah. Nothing like being a girl, Dad. Oh, yeah. And I got two. I feel you on that. All right, next up, any new recipes you can recommend? I'm always working on something new. You know, I'm always, you know, if it's just a little spice or something that catches my attention at the market, you know, I'll just grab it. And that's on a daily basis, you know, and uh, not everybody gets to taste that. You know, you're lucky enough that I'm cooking it right there and I'm like, hey, you, you want to try this? Like, try this, you know, and boom, I'll sell it for the day. It'll be like the day special. But other than that, like, it's a hit or miss, you know, but I'm, I'm constantly, like, switching it up, taking yeah. out, putting in, let's try this, you know. So that goes back to there's no really, no set recipe. It's, I'm always, I'm always playing with, with the, with the flavors. That's right. Cooking with, cooking from the heart, cooking with soul. I love it. All right. Kevin says, the flag behind you is dope. Uh, where can we get similar Paul's Grill merchandise? Oh, okay. Are you going to start selling swag? Is swag coming soon? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the flag, that's the first, that's my banner I made when I first started. And that's pretty much all the meats that I was, well, that I started off with. So I said, go big or go home. So I gave myself a challenge to, you know, perfect all the meats that you see on the, on the flag. And one of my biggest flavors that I created with a mixture of barbecue was a chipotle barbecue chicken, which was, you know, a good hit till now. 
Now tell us what what are the meats? A little bit hard to to read it. It's uh, chipotle barbecue chicken ribs, tri tip pulled pork. It says uh, chicken lollipops, brisket, pork belly, and burnt ends. There you go. Yeah, that, 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 that's a great, great way to start. All right, Rodney, Rodney's trying to help me feel feel a little better. So he says, I failed at smoking oxtails too. Next time, I'm going to braise them in liquids after I get enough smoke to get the tenderness I want. I was yeah. I that you can broil them. Oh, I'll say that again? I said, I was going to mention that too. You can, you can put them to broil after. It becomes like a sponge, and it just absorbs all the juices. Huh, okay, okay. Yeah, I... Oh, man, I smoked them for two hours at, like, 250, and then I braised them for another two hours at 250. But, you know, I think this is where I went wrong, right? I think I was following, you know, like, a recipe that I... I think I saw it in a book or something. So my mistake was I was I was cooking to time instead of cooking to feel. And a matter of fact, I, I do remember I, I did a, a probe test on the tenderness and I thought, oh, that doesn't feel quite as tender as, a, as I think it should. And I should have just put that Jones right back on the smoker, you know, to, to let them keep going. But I, I didn't. So I got to got to follow that my instincts a little better on that. So from what I learned about that is that sometimes and I learned this by mistake, actually, sometimes we got to. Uh, not be so much afraid or you know let our pride go in with the high heat uh because that happened to me i was ready to serve or the time came for me ready to serve and it wasn't as tender and i had yeah. half an hour what i did is i turned up that heat and it just it, it, it starts to boil boil itself and everything and and half an hour 45 minutes i had that thing falling off the bone that's a good point. You know, that's a good point. Don't be afraid to, yeah, turn up the heat, make some adjustments, break the rules, break the so-called rules. You know, don't be afraid to do that and definitely go with your, go with your, your instincts. Yeah. I think pride definitely got in my way. Cause I was like, man, you, these should be ready, you know, but I, I didn't, I didn't listen to my instincts. <laughs> All right, what do we got next, Aaron? All 100 says you have to bring the smash barbecue barbecue burgers back soon. Okay, I guess he's had your uh, your smash burgers. Yeah, I, I brought them I brought them out for a little bit, and uh, I was kind of saving them for this time. You know, the end of spring, start of summer, and they'll be coming back soon. I'll probably, I'm thinking of bringing them back for 20. For everybody that's gonna have the munchies to catch me out there on Ficklewood. Awesome. All right. And Rodrigo says, do you sell sliders? Yeah, I make sliders. I just haven't made them in a while. Okay. If you were to open up a storefront, where would you do it? Uh, Location, city. My first, my first, it would be, I would want to do it in LA. Yeah. But uh, the way things are going here, and I'm, I'm telling you, I've been blessed with the, with the Long Beach community here. Um, everybody's been so loving and supporting that uh, this will be my second, you know. And if I, if it goes first, then you know, I'll open up another one eventually in LA. But for now, it's just you know, Long Beach and LA is the starter, whatever. Okay, so right now, Long Beach is treating you well. Oh, yeah, man, they they they've always treated me well, man. Uh, shout out to Long Beach and everybody showing love and support. Nice, the LBC. And it's All right, to everybody, man. Because again, I wouldn't be here with every, without everybody's support, man. Yeah. All right, we got anything else, Aaron? Okay, correctional officer for lockdown says uh, boil oxtails with water and apple cider vinegar before smoking them. Yep. Huh. So, so a couple of you guys are saying boil them. Oh, it's just something about that that's you know <laughs> the boiling is kind of like like kind of fighting my uh my barbecue 
my barbecue spirit, but you know, I, I, I guess I won't have to, I won't be so stubborn since, since a couple of you guys are saying, oh, you know, start off by them. boiling them. Yeah. You'll find yeah. out, you'll, you'll open a, a, a nice door, man. All right. All right. I'm, I'm keeping notes on this, but I'm going to have to try that next time. All right, Meadow, Meadow Creek has awesome pig chickens cookers. Check them out. Sure will. Right now, I'm doing a lot of homework, man. I'm going to need a new setup soon. Yeah. Um, like the, the, the offset that you have right now, do you have a, an idea? Like how big is it? It's a char griller. I just, when I first started, okay. I, I, I didn't really know what I was getting myself into, really. So I went with the nicest looking one I found at Home Depot, and I went with yeah. that. And once I learned a little bit about it, I was like, man, I already got it. So what I did is I took it apart and uh, pretty much redid it, man. I made it like a little reverse smoker. Okay, okay. Yeah. And now you're so okay. I get you. So now you're yeah. You're ready for that uh, for that custom big boy. Oh yeah, yeah. The practice run is over. That's cool. You'll have it, man. Keep striving. I know you'll you'll get it before you know it. Oh yeah, that's the plan. Hopefully by the end of the year, man. Okay. All right. Next up, Rodney says, "Would you consider a food truck?" Uh, a lot of people actually ask me this, and I don't know. I kind of feel the hands-on of the smoker and having my trailer fits right. Something about the food truck takes away from, you know, like, the the fun of it. You know, like, like if you ask yeah. anybody, I smell like barbecue 24-7, man. And if I could do the same thing on a, on a trailer um, that I could do on a on a food truck i'll stick with the trailer something about you know the maintenance the upkeep you know the storage it's just i feel like it'll be too much yeah yeah i think that that sounds like kind of a different uh like a, a whole different path yeah yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. you said you know yeah I, I, I feel you on that yeah i like to keep uh, keep it plain and simple man Right. Yeah. Right. The simplicity of life is beautiful. Oh, but Kevin says a food truck would be fire. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I have a storefront and I could like send it off with meats already, like, like you know, once I I get to that point, you know, that cool. But right now, and like, uh, you know, personally, I don't I don't think I need it at the moment. Yeah. Got to keep it, keep it simple. All right. Uh, we got Paul. You're the best. You're an inspiration to the community. Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, nice. man. Thank you, man. Thank you. I mean, they already know. Uh, it's food, man. Food brings everybody together. It creates unity, creates community. And I just love that. I love it. I love to see everybody get together and have a good time, man. That's right. That's right. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> the food, like you said, it, it brings everyone together and, and makes everyone just makes everyone happy, especially when the food is outstanding. Oh yeah. Now Mike Mike says a food truck is a lot of overhead. Yeah, you would have to raise your prices. Oh yeah, man. I, I don't want to do that. Right. All right. Are we all caught up? I guess we're we're caught up on the comments. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Definitely got a lot of, a lot of feedback. A lot of good positive, positive stuff. Which I think is a like like someone said earlier. You know, as a testament, you know, to to the reputation that you've that you've built and cultivated. You know. Um. All right. Paul, do your daughters enjoy cooking? Oh yeah, like, they love it. You can teach them the art. Yeah, do you see them? Uh, you know, potentially following in your footsteps, or they, are, they already do. If anything, uh, you know, 
since my mom passed away, I try to go visit my grandma every Saturday, you know, even if it's to go say good morning, have breakfast. Our first stop after picking up my daughters is to go, you know, see my grandma, either have breakfast or whatever. And long story short, you know, they're the ones cooking us breakfast now, you know, scrambled eggs and bacon and toasting. And, you know, I gave them the idea that, you know, taught them how and, one thing I love about my girls is they're so independent. I actually put them on uh, one of my reels. They have their aprons on. They're actually mad at me right now because uh, they don't have uh, Paul's Grill t-shirts. Oh. Yeah, so that's one of the re- the requests is that I have to make them uh, t-shirts. All right, more, more incentive, man, to, to get some swag together. Oh, yeah, man. I, I make shirts. They just It comes and goes, you know? Yeah. Depending on the season. All right, cool, cool. All right, Mike, thank you, brother, for tuning in. Always appreciate you. You have a great night as well. And, uh, yeah, hope hopefully you'll be able to, to tune in to us next week. But definitely appreciate you for uh, connecting me with, with Paul. Oh, yeah, man, good looking out, bro. We got to link up. Absolutely, absolutely. Right, link up, do a collab, do something together, bro. All right, we got Rodney. Rodney says, shout out to you, Kenyatta, for using your platform for small businesses, the backbone of this country. Yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate that, Rodney. Um, and that's definitely what I'm I'm trying to do is really trying to connect with with more folks who you know, just have that love and passion for barbecue. You know, we've got kind of some big names in the barbecue industry, you know, they kind of get all the all the glory, get get all the headlines, but you know, there are just scores of of guys, you know, guys like uh like us who just love it, you know, love doing it. And um yeah, any any little bit I can do to contribute, you know, is is what I'm I'm trying to do here. So I appreciate you saying that. Oh yeah, it's much appreciated, man, for real. All right, Kevin says, for all the ladies out there, a key to a man's heart is his stomach. Bring your man a plate from Paul's Grill. Yeah, hey, that's what I. It's it's not the first time I advertise that. You know, Father's Day, Valentine's Day, you know. Instead of, you know, how they've been doing the bouquets of flowers and everything. I've been looking at ideas and, you know, do, right. do, uh, do skewers with ribs, you know, and give back to the fellas. Yeah, you need to screenshot this one right here. This, this could be a, um, a, a nice promo piece for sure. All right. Correctional officer says, uh, what about what about libations? We need to wash this good food down with something, smoothies, beer, et cetera. Uh, well, when I'm on my own, I, I do sell sodas on the side, waters, you know, um, iced tea. But when I do collab with, let's say, uh, Fickle with Cider, I let them do their thing. You yeah. know, I, br- I, bring, I, I don't like to step on toes. You get me? I, I go there for what I was meant to go do, which serves delicious food and let them do what they're known for and, you know. Help us wash it down with that good cider. Absolutely. All right, Rodrigo, he's, he, he's got another slogan for you. Player to player, pimp to pimp. I would love a plate from Paul's Grill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sweet. You already know where to find me, man. All right. Well, you got anything Anything else you want to you wanna promo? What, what do you got coming up? Uh, it's for now. It's just these uh the ones I've been mentioning, man. Starting uh, yeah. on the twentieth, I'll be at Fickwood Cider. Then uh, May second, I'll be there again. Uh, just that uh this next Saturday will be uh Grand Prix weekend. So I mean, everybody come out, see all the race cars. You know, come out to Long Beach, enjoy some good barbecue. And okay. Then, um, and then May 5th, I'll be uh, with another group of good friends in uh, Linwood, you know, supporting them and their business. You know, we all got to support each other. Nice. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm just pulling this up here. Okay, so Fickle fickle Nights. Okay, so they have a – this is where you were, I think, last yeah, weekend. Yeah, that, that was there uh, the previous weekend, yeah. 
Okay. So yeah, they have a concert they, series. Yeah, they it's like open mic. You know, I do, uh, like, again, here, the Long Beach community have been great with me, and I've met a lot of people that are, you know, interconnected. You know, everybody loves networking and, you know, building community. So that's how I got my luck out here in Long Beach is, you know, I met a group of guys that, you know, they, they play music out here that introduced me with another guy that got everything, you know, put together. And, you know, shout out to my guys, the Dish Pits and Savvy, man. They they run open Long Beach Open Mic. And that's how I got introduced into Ficklewood. And, you know, it's just one thing out of another. And it's sparking and it takes off. And, yeah. you know, doing it. That's how it starts. Fun, you know, teamwork. You know, we're all heading to the same together. And if we could dominate together, I mean, we got this. There's, there's really no stopping us. Absolutely. Absolutely. And guys, if you, you do want to check them out at, at Ficklewood, I see the address here, uh, 280 East Broadway in Long Beach. Yeah, that's right there. Cross streets is Broadway and Lime. All right. Absolutely. That's, that's great. Well, thanks again, Paul, for, for coming on. I really do appreciate you. Um, you know, I'm just, I feel really humbled and, and blessed that I've been able to connect with some good guys. Kind of, you know, interesting, funny to me that, that you guys are all like in, in Southern California between, you know, Joe of Q Bellies and Mike of Bones Barbecue and, mm -hmm. and you, Paul's Grill. Um, so I'm definitely, you know, uh, hit me up if if you you've got somebody that you think uh, that I should talk to. I'm definitely trying to to keep the momentum going, and yeah, yeah. you know, again, lose, using the pla platform to uh, shine the light, you know, on on guys like yourself who are who are doing the grind. All right, and then here it is for everyone one more time. Check Paul out at Ficklewood, seven twenty East Broadway. In yep. the LBC. Yep, for cool cider. And Rodrigo says, talk to Paul again. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely <laughs> gonna 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 reach out, you know, reach out to you guys uh, to try and keep this going. Um because he'd like the Rodrigo is saying he would lo love to hear more about uh about Paul's special. So check out all of these guys, you know, especially if you are in the in the Southern California area, if you're in uh, South Los Angeles, Long Beach, definitely look for Paul. Again, appreciate you for, for coming on and appreciate everyone for tuning in and, and all of the feedback. Again, that is the engine that drives the podcast. Uh, uh, so for having me again, man. Oh, absolutely. Hope we can uh, get together again in the future. Uh, Kevin says, Paul for mayor. <laughs> from mayor of long beach all right guys well we're going to get out of here another great podcast great live stream appreciate all of the support and the feedback look for us uh every friday watch more episodes of the podcast same time same place if you want to tune in live we're on it uh, 7 p.m. Pacific time, 10 p.m. Eastern time every Friday right here on the Backyard Smoke Master Barbecue channel. So thanks again, everyone. Have a great weekend, and I will see you in the next one. Get out there. Enjoy your, your grills and smokers. That's right. All right. Thanks again, Paul. All right, thank you, guys, man. All right.